Hi guys, this is gsn1.com and I'm here with the Acer Liquid Jade Primo for a full review. This is a Windows 10 mobile phone that's a Lumia 950 rival and it comes bundled with a dock, keyboard and mouse, all of that for the price of $649. The products are available on the Microsoft Store and from what I've seen you can also find them on Amazon. So the phone debuted in April this year and is positioned as an upper mid-ranger, a sort of a corporate phone. We've tested it with accessories like the cover, the Acer Air 11 series monitor and it can turn the phone into a PC replacement but only for your office needs. Now let's get to the design. It may seem like a phone made of metal, it's actually plastic polycarbonate that imitates the texture of metal and is very curved as you can well see here. It's black plastic and this one looks like a removable cover, well it's not as you can tell by the two slots here that are only accessible via metal key. The grip is quite okay but this phone is too long to be used with a single hand. Um, luckily we also have a special one hand mode that we'll detail later on. There's also a unique speaker design from Acer, the earpiece and the speaker here get that unique approach which some people may mistake for a second camera, it's not, it's actually the speaker. The facade reminds me maybe of a Nexus 4 or Nexus 5 and I feel that the power button is a bit too low, I always press the volume up or volume down instead of it, so that's not a very good thing. The front side is prone to scratches and smudges while the back imitates the glow of metal, the camera protrudes a bit and luckily there are no creaks here um, unlike the Lumia 950XL that tend to perform a lot of creaks. I also have to mention that uh, we have a discrete metal frame signaled by this chromed area all around the phone which looks a bit more elegant than the rest of the device. And uh, I also have to mention that uh, one of the slots here tends to protrude quite a bit which means the finishing is not exactly top notch. Anyways, the phone measures 8.4 millimeters in thickness, it weighs 150 grams, which is quite reasonable for a 5.5 inch tablet. In the end, it's a light phone, a comfy phone, but not quite premium on account of the plastic and some rougher finishing aspects. Now the screen you can see here, pretty brightly lit, it's a 5.5 inch AMOLED Full HD with zero air gap and Gorilla Glass protection supposedly. The actual experience can be tested from here and let's check out one of our test clips. Ok, so we have well calibrated colors, pretty good brightness, wide view angles and also the contrast is rather reasonable in the sun, so no problem with that, also deep blacks. Ok, so let's see what else we got here, um, let's see what the pixel setup is like under the microscope. Ok, so this is the pixel setup, it's of the Pentile Matrix variety and then we proceeded to measure the brightness and we achieved 452 lux units, which is quite good. Uh, it surpasses the Huawei P9 Lite and the Lumia 950XL, so that's a performance. Still, this brightness scores below the OnePlus 2 and the Huawei Honor 5X if you really want a comparison. And now let's see what the actual settings for set screen are. So we go to the settings area tap here, tap here, a lot of sub menus, we can tweak brightness level, automatically adjust brightness, rotation lock, size of apps, show a total connected display and sadly there are no tweaks for the color or anything like that or the hue. Ok, so the screen is good, we move on to performance and we start off with the CPU, let's see the whole setup here, we're dealing with the hexa core processor here and uh, it's the Qualcomm Snapdragon 808. We also get the Adreno 418 GPU, 3GB of RAM, 32GB of storage, a micro SD card slot. Well, it's actually one of the SIM slots that can be used for that purpose. At first sight, the phone may seem like it's lag free and has fluid functioning, but every once in a while uh, it will suffer from unexplicable lag, especially when you open up an app. It takes quite a long time to open and load up and there are times when the power button will not start the phone or will not power on the display which may seem like a problem to me. Other than that I was happy with the performance of the games. So if it's gaming you want, Riptide GP2 runs fine, Traffic Rider which we reviewed also runs fine, both of them with reasonably high graphics. The problem, the temperature gets a bit higher than we like it to during gameplay sessions. 
Okay, so as you just saw, the game didn't start up very fast. And here we go. Time to race a bit. Graphics look okay. Control is quite responsive. Doesn't seem to be dropping any frames. Very responsive controls and the phone handles well. Thanks to its rounded nature, fits well in the hand and it's quite easy to control. Okay, with the gaming out of the way, we can talk a bit about the benchmark. I will not insist too much on them because the comparison with Android models would be futile. I doubt that the benchmarks on this phone have been properly optimized by current standards. Anyway, uh, we do have Antutu here. And here we go. As I said before, we did an Antutu test and let's see what came out of that. This is the result in Antutu 6 and uh, this is 71k points, which actually places us above the Lenovo Vibe X3, which has very similar specs. That one has 68k points, so that's good. In the meantime, the Lumia 950XL, 76k points, so not very far and that's okay. We also have a base mark test. Let's find that. I have a lot of screenshots here. But that one is here, so 26k points, 26,448, while the Lumia 950 XL 29,000 and the Lenovo Vibe X3 25,000, so we beat it again. We also beat the similarly specced LG G4 with its 25k points. Other tests, well, we got GFX Bench, and in GFX Bench, uh, this model scored uh, um, 12,000, excuse me, 1232 points, and the Lumia 950 XL scored. Uh, 1400 points at least in the t-rex off-screen 1080p test enough of my babbling here it is so 1232 and meanwhile the lumia 950 xl 1400 not very far from it in general benchmarks were quite okay we managed to beat models with similar specs and we scored just a bit below those that are higher spec sadly the lag as i mentioned before may be a problem at times speaking of problems temperature got very high sometimes and this is one example, after playing the game you saw before, Riptide GP2 for 15 minutes, we achieved 44.4 degrees Celsius, which means serious overheating, and of course, that's not a good thing. Now when it comes to the battery, we're dealing with a lithium polymer unit, 2870 mAh, on paper should provide 20 hours of talk time, and in real life, in our video playback test, um, let's see how it did. So when it comes to HD video playback in a loop, we scored 10 hours and 55 minutes of continuous playback, which is quite good. This means we surpassed the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge or the Huawei P9 Plus and also the uh, Lumia 950XL, which is not bad, but we scored below the iPhone 6 and the Xiaomi Mi 5. There's no PC mark here, so there's no way to measure continuous usage. Of course, uh, once I used the phone continuously for a day, I noticed that the battery kept dropping on me. so. Uh, one day of regular usage tops is what you get out of this phone. The charging is done in about 2 hours and 41 minutes. Keep in mind we had to use the dock as a charger, we did not get an official charger and with a regular charger it took us a very very long time to juice up the phone. Of course, we also have battery saving options in the settings area provided that we find them properly. Ok, battery is here, battery saver and we got estimated battery usage and battery saver that extends battery life by limiting background activity and push notifications. Those are the settings. And that's everything you get to play with including apps that are always allowed to run. Now on the acoustic side of things, as I mentioned before, a unique looking speaker here at the bottom, at the back. And there's no special audio technology that we know of, no trace of Dolby, DTS or other things like that. This player is called Groove Music. Sadly, it lacks an equalizer. It has a pretty strong online presence, even some online radios, but I'm more interested in uh, the things we have stored on this device. So let's actually listen to a tune. Let's go again.
you just heard a slight case of muffling and the decibel meter also confirms the story so let's see it okay so not screenshots we go here and we see that the decibel meter shows 82.5 decibels at the front and at the back 87.1 decibels which is quite a good result there's about a 5 decibel difference, so that's muffling. It's below the Lumia 950 XL, but above the Galaxy S6 Edge Plus, for example. Now the headphones are these ones. They remind me of those that came with the HTC Incredible models. They're quite good looking, still made of plastic. Uh, they're comfy in the ear, very comfy actually. They have a great bass, great clarity, but the wire tends to tangle. I like the discrete remote. Many headphones from handsets have huge remotes, not this one. Okay, so I also regret the lack of radio and equalizer here, but I was happy with the acoustics of the headphones and the speaker. Time to discuss the camera. At the back there's a 21 megapixel shooter with dual LED dual tone flash. There's also f2.2 aperture, 4K video and at the front there's an 8 megapixel shooter with an 84 degree wide angle lens. Now the camera app, let's first close some apps and then open it so there will be no doubt regarding its fast opening okay i think we had enough and it's time to open up the camera starts up reasonably fast not the fastest in the world but also not a slug and here we go classical options that you also saw on the nokia excuse me microsoft lumia 950 xl so main options at the top front camera shortcut flash and the hdr and then the more complex options like white balance there's also ISO and shutter and exposure and focus and then come the more regular options like lenses, photo timer and the settings including aspect ratio, flash settings and video can be shot in full HD or 4K at only 30 frames per second. Digital video stabilization is also included. Um, I found that the camera tends to focus quite hard at times, especially out in the open. It takes a very long while to focus and also a very long while to actually take the shots. This time it's working fast, but it's a hit and miss affair. Sometimes it can be fast, other times it focuses hard and takes a bunch of seconds to take a shot. Anyway, exposure change was also rather odd and zoom was pretty fluid. As you can see here, doesn't look very fluid now, but as I said before, it's a hit and miss affair, felt a bit buggy at times. Okay, time to go to the gallery and see the shots we've taken outdoors during the day and night. So here we are with the gallery and let's check out those shots. I'm going to start off with the daytime ones. Once again, the camera felt very buggy during the capture. It took a long while to focus and a long while to take shots, but restarts may solve that problem. Sadly, what they cannot solve is the oversaturation of images made even worse by the HDR. As you can see here, the details were rather good, I'd say, but most of the colors felt a bit artificial and not realistic at all. There were some burnt areas of the shots and once again HDR made it worse. Every once in a while we registered some ok shots color wise but those were in the shade. The selfies are burnt here and the sky is totally unrealistic. These are selfies in the sun but those in the shade are just a bit better and the skin and hair texture are ok. We proceed and then we have a series of another shot or two. As you can see try to focus for a close up of a leaf. Only managed it through the third or fourth attempt and once again oversaturated and blown up colors with a bit of over sharpening and blur while trying to focus on close-ups. More shots here. The focus is good. I cannot object to that. Provided you're patient enough to focus properly. And the panorama is actually quite good looking. It's solid at 9600 over 1728 pixels. It's clear and not very burnt. In spite of having the front, the sun direct in front of us, not bad. We continue with a series of shots. We tried out some close-ups and we tried quite a few attempts before actually managing to focus properly. I'll admit it, not exactly the fault of the phone, the wind was blowing, it was hard to focus properly on a subject. In the shade the colors get a bit better, but check out the poor dynamic range, so you can see it here with the sun shining from the back, things get out of hand in the background. The details are quite ok in landscape shots, while close-ups are a hit and miss affair. When they do hit, they're detailed and nice looking texture-wise. 
This certainly does not feel like the camera of a flagship. This phone is not a flagship in the end. It's a higher mid-range device, but even for that, I've seen better than it. One of the best pictures taken with this phone is actually one of the last. And I'm going to show it to you. Here we go, more colorful shots here. Totally unrealistic colors here. Triangle close-up, and this is actually the best shot a very detailed close-up of a metal thingy object whatever anyway it feels below a lot of mid-range phones below the Lenovo Vibe X3 Samsung Galaxy A5 2016 Nexus 6P and of course the Lumia 950 and the Lumia 950 XL also the LG G4 we feel it's buggy and with an update the camera may become a bit better those were daytime shots and we also have low light shots so let's find them Okay, here we go starting off with this one here. These are taken during the night time and I found that the flash was rather good We got a nice texture of uh, buildings and these bricks keep in mind It was deep and dark night and for that I have to comment the flash and the texture Of course, we had some blurry shots lots of yellowish hues and some of the images are a bit washed out and the colors don't look good at all the street light halos are uh, very big and in the distance you can see a lot of blur. So quite weak in the night time and for example the LG um, Nexus 5X handles this a little bit better. Okay, uh, we're done with the uh, photo aspect, time to go to the video aspect and let's see what we're dealing with here. So I'm going to go here and maybe find videos here, nope. I'm going to have to find them from the gallery yet again. You can film in full HD up to 30 frames per second with an 18 mega per second bitrate or you can shoot in 4K with a 52 mega per second bitrate. So daytime videos come first. This is actually the first clip. It has a very good microphone this handset. And what we registered here is that uh, we're getting unrealistic colors, serious quality loss when zooming in, focus loss every once in a while with a refocus, and a poor exposure change. That's the zoom test, dropping details quite a bit. And the green hue is especially badly rendered on this phone. The reds are well caught on camera, the greens are disastrously caught on video and photo. Okay, so that was video number one. We have more for you, do not worry. Here we go, more colorful this time. Of course, the 4K video we shot, it follows up next, is mint, looks perfect, but even there you can find refocusing and uh, at least it caught the sky in a pretty realistic way. Here we have, uh, let's say, reasonable colors. Okay, we have some burn here, we have some oversaturation, we have some detail loss when zooming in. And in the end, it reminds me of the LG G4 capture, which was underwhelming last year, but less burnt this time. And here we are. This is the 4K video. It's very crisp, cinematic, no problem here. And by the way, the stabilization is rather poor, I have to mention it. Aside from reminding me of the LG G4, also reminds me of the Asus Zenfone 2, which certainly was not a powerhouse of photo or video. Now the low light video capture. A lot of yellow, a lot of refocusing, shaky, still good microphone, okay clarity and stabilization is pretty poor. Overall the only nice things about this phone's cameras are the microphone basically and the selfies. Okay, we're done with the camera, time to go to other aspects like the browser, this is the Microsoft Edge browser and let's go to gsndom.com. On paper it should be a very fast browser, on this phone somehow it's not, as you can see it's still loading the page even now and the scrolling is still pretty fluid. We have the workflow keyboard, very comfy, even comfy to use with a single hand without a problem and uh, somehow the benchmarks of the browser were good, I mean Sun Spider and the works. Okay, now we go to connectivity, just in case you were wondering I have to remind you it's a dual SIM phone and one of the SIM slots can be replaced for a micro SD. Here is the uh, options area for the networks. This phone has 4G LTE category 6, dual SIM slots, USB Type-C port at the bottom. 
Bluetooth 4.1, there's Wi-Fi A, B, G, N, A, C with MIMO. Somehow there's no NFC here, there's no Wi-Fi Direct, no FM radio. And uh, speaking of other things, we don't have a fingerprint scanner or iris scanner, but we do have a GPS. Now when it comes to the uh, calling, dialer and things like that, well, the calls have an okay volume, good clarity, decent isolation and good microphone and signal. We also did a bunch of tests with speed test but uh, I'm cautious about the tests because the speed test app on uh, Windows 10 mobile does not exactly feel exactly finished so cautious about that okay so these are the results this is the 4G test very impressive 100 mega per second in download 8.8 .8 mega per second in upload uh, which is quite impressive on the download bit the upload well not so much and then we have the Wi-Fi tests so once again those were the 4G as you can see here, the symbol of the antenna, 100 mega per second, and the symbol of the Wi-Fi, it goes up to 62 mega per second in download and 9.13 in upload. Could be much better here, but at least the 4G is top-notch. Time to discuss the OS, UI and applications. We are running on Windows 10 Mobile, basically offering the same experience as we got on Microsoft Lumia 950 XL. This time we don't have a glance screen, and we have the live tile system as you can see we have three sizes of tiles as you just saw there's the transparency you can see what's behind them and we can overlap them on an image there's also the action center including notifications and this expandable area of quick toggles related to connectivity flashlight vpn and other things other than that if we swipe to the left we got an app list that's searchable seems huge at first sight but you'll get used to it quite fast obviously no google apps and no services from google are supported here multitasking is done like this a list of scrollable horizontally integrated thumbnails with an x to close them and um, um, takes a long time to close apps that's what i noticed there's also one-handed mode keep the home button pressed come on and that's the one hand mode so you can access this app for example and use it with one hand with no problem at least on paper as i mentioned before the phone is buggy sometimes the core of the one hand experience is to get to use the phone with a single hand even while holding it like this and doesn't feel very helpful if you ask me okay so it's time for the continuum bit of the review as i said before the phone comes bundled with a dock that's the dock from acer the equivalent of the lumia display dock this model comes with an hdmi port there's also a usb 3.0 port to usb 2.0 and this one is to uh, juice up the phone with power what you have to do is place the handset in the dock of course juice up the dock with electrical power start the continuum app connect the keyboard and mouse connect the dock to a monitor and then you're all set you have your pc replacement you can use full screen office you can use full screen videos and microsoft edge plus a few other apps this selection is rather limited but you can get full screen office like on a regular pc that's the core of the experience and the dock is bundled with the phone as i mentioned before i actually got to use it on an acer r11 series monitor and everything worked out fine there was no lag but there was also no snapping or multitasking on that screen overall i have to say that windows 10 mobile feels a bit on the old side even today hasn't evolved hugely from uh, Windows Phone 8.1 for example, maybe the settings area is better organized, although if you want to reach a certain setting, you have to get through a lot of sub-menus and you get stuck in the technicalities, well at least it's better organized than on iOS, at least that's my opinion. Anyways, when it comes to the applications, I counted them all, the phone has pre-installed 38 apps which is very close to the definition of bloatware and uh, interestingly we have uh, two messaging apps for the two sims and two phone apps for the two sims there's the usual search there's settings there's skype um, there's also the office apps um, we got word of course we have powerpoint there's also excel there's a news app a maps app basically the usual package at least there's not 50 apps so 38 is reasonable compared to what i've seen on other phones it's time for the verdict this is the acer liquid jade primo and on the pro side we have lots of bundled accessories a pretty solid battery good display 
it's a light and comfy phone with good acoustics and okay selfies it has a pretty good build and it's reasonably nice for gaming if you do not mind the overheating part those are the pros now on the cons we've got a very slow picture taking a bit of lag and bugs bad focusing overheating after a series of games oversaturation for the pictures poor stabilization when shooting videos and uh, some elements of the design are poorly placed like the power button and the sim slot and finally the lack of nfc iris scanner fingerprint scanner glance and the slow charge are also bummers it remains a phone that's good for power users for pro users of microsoft services and apps they want a pc replacement a laptop replacement they put the phone in the dock connect it to a monitor connect a keyboard or mouse and mouse and they're all set is the full package that's how you get the phone basically getting it uh, on its own is no good so a full package is recommended here it's not exactly future proof seeing how windows 10 mobile does not have much of a future sadly with the camera problems and the heat problems that are my concern right now it's only good for continuum the display and the battery and there's that it remains a mid-range phone that may be forgotten by history pretty easily. And this is it from gsndome.com. Bye-bye.